But Brady wouldn't be any good anywhere else but New England, obviously. We all hate the Patriots. There, there's an institutional arrogance. Tom Brady would be a bum in short. I hate Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. No how. That's not good enough. The He's play is Lance football. Armstrong without the bicycle. Okay, this is a major misconception that strictly comes from his draft position. He fell in the draft because he didn't wow the scouts with physical abilities, most of which isn't a must to be a quarterback. It helps, but it's not everything. Well, as in most cases, scouts are wrong more than they are right. They are also victims of falling in love with flash and flair, speed times, strength, and they ignore, or almost all but ignore, intelligence, patience, coachability, desire, and heart. This has been proven so many times over and over, yet they still don't learn their lessons. Now, I'm not an official talent scout. However, I have called correctly the careers of the last 15 first overall picks correctly, excluding the last two years, because obviously we don't know yet. And it wasn't just first overall. It was big name college players who went in the first round. Why am I saying this? Because it wasn't that hard. It doesn't make me special. The average knowledgeable football fan can do what I do, but the scouts, they fall in love with the stupidest things. And not only that, they are often at the mercy of doing what the owner wants. <sighs> oh, the owners, the owners. The football team is their new toy, like a new car or something like that, or a new, new jet plane. The, the team is just a toy to them. Why do you think so many of these men can create empires, business empires, but they can't run a team? Because they always get involved. They think they know what they're doing, and they don't. These guys know nothing about football, but they think they do just because they had a bank account big enough to buy a team. That's like me buying a hospital and suddenly telling all the doctors how to operate. It would be a disaster. I would buy the team, but I would take my hands off the wheel and leave it to others, usually by general manager. But an owner is similar to a less educated fanboy of a team and will react to hype and highlight reels, just like everyone else. But back to Brady. What's the criteria a scout looks for in a college player? Did he play for a major program? Brady did. Michigan. Check. Did he play in big games? Brady did. Check. Did he win any bowl games and against a major power? Check. And check. Beat Alabama in his last bowl game. Did he have any signature wins? Check. Not only that, he brought back Michigan every time the other quarterbacks put him in a hole. The Wolverines got in a 17-point hole with Henson, and Brady was asked to dig them out of it. So why wasn't Brady looked at more? It's simple. Because he had to share time with Drew Henson. Yes, this was because Michigan was so scared of losing Drew Henson, whose popularity brought good attention to the university. Henson was threatening to go play baseball if he wasn't coddled. This one director of player personnel said he understood why Michigan is continuing to try to get Henson more and more opportunities to go out there and get experience because his upside is so much higher than Tom Brady's. And I said, yeah, but Brady's the guy with the experience. He's the captain. Ten wins last year. He said, yeah, but if he doesn't play Henson, he's got a problem because then Henson's going to go and he's going to go play baseball. So despite Brady being the better quarterback at that time, probably, Brady had to share time because the coach bought into the hype just like the scouts do. And where is Drew Henson today? What about the next scout strike against Brady? He wasn't very fast. He needs to be able to be mobile. Great. Do you know what draft picks were mobile quarterbacks that they claim quarterback needs to have? Demarcus Russell, RG3, Tim Tebow, Jameis Winston, shall I go on? Next strike against Brady. Too skinny, lacks strength and throwing power. Do you know what draft picks were skinny when they were drafted? Alex Smith, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, Michael Vick. You know what draft picks had strength and throwing power? Demarcus Russell, Tim Tebow, Brady Quinn. So, why do scouts make so many mistakes with first round quarterbacks? Hype. They all fall for hype. They don't even interview these quarterbacks the right way. They don't ask the right questions and they are terrible at reading a person, understanding what makes a person tick. Understanding their intelligence, or lack thereof, understanding their personality, that is the key. We all know that these kids are great athletes, that's why you're talking to them. But we need to know that they've got more than physical talent, because it doesn't mean anything in the NFL if you ain't got the head, if your head is not on straight. I have been right about all those draft picks, 
just from watching them in interviews and watching them in games. Imagine if I got to interview them one-on-one. -on -one. I knew Jamarcus Russell would be a bust. I'm sure a lot of you probably did too. That was a pretty easy one to call. But yet the Raiders wouldn't listen. I knew RG3's ceiling was a Ryan Fitzpatrick type career, but it went even worse than I anticipated. I knew Andrew Luck would make a good quarterback. I knew Mario Williams was a smarter pick over Reggie Bush. I knew Vince Young would suck. I knew Matt Leiner was a bad pick and would never conform and adjust to life in the NFL. And I knew Matt Ryan would be a good quarterback because he had so many common threads with Brady. Now, I know you have no reason to believe me and it's easy to say looking back, but I'm not trying to convince you of myself as a talent evaluator. Quite the opposite. I'm trying to show that if these scouts stopped being blinded by hype, they would then see that Aaron Rodgers should have went number one over Alex Smith, or that Tom Brady should have gone at least in the second or third round, or that Russell Wilson was a first rounder and was a better pick overall than RG3. They should have seen Joe Montana for what he was, but they missed it. There was also a time when the New York Jets, instead of drafting Dan Marino, drafted Ken O'Brien. <laughs> Jets take the first round selection, quarterback, no! Ken O'Brien of California Davis. Everybody said if Marino was going to be around at that time, they take Marino. Obviously, the Jets know something that, you know, the people up here don't. What a tragedy that is. This is the draft report on you. Basically, it goes poor build, skinny, lacks great physical stature and strength, and gets knocked down easily. That kind of gets me fired up, because I'm thinking, you know, what the hell do these people know? I mean, um, that sounds like uh, Joe Montana right there. So all of this is why people assume Brady couldn't be great on any other team. He entered the NFL with this misconception about him, and it has stuck ever since. You know, you have these guys that are in college, and yeah, they have the ability to stand back there in the pocket and throw it to this guy who's open by 10 yards. Okay, do they have the same ability to stand back in that pocket when a guy is hitting them and throw it to a guy that's open by one yard? Can you do it when the speed's faster? Can you do it when you're getting hit by somebody bigger? Can you do it when the defense you're seeing is more complex? Nobody knows until they actually get there. Tom Brady reads defenses better than any quarterback I know right now. If Tom had been drafted in the first round, people wouldn't even say that. That's the difference maker right there. But somehow, Tom was doing for Michigan what he's known for in the NFL. Bring his team back so they can compete. Last time I checked, that skill is translatable to any team in any league in any era. Tom Brady showed poise. He showed the heart of a bird. He showed the heart of a leader. The heart of a lion. But like Brady haters, I can't convince these scouts to see past their bias. I'm telling you, when you get out on the field and another team wants to knock your head off, They've got to be able to handle that mentally and emotionally. And some do, some love it, and some that makes them very nervous and they lose some confidence. If the 49ers had just drafted Brady instead of Giovanni Carmazzi, what would have happened? Would Brady have made the 49ers good? Yes, absolutely. And why? The biggest reason, coachability. Who was running the 49ers at the time? Who was really behind the 49ers at the time? Bill Walsh. Brady would have conformed to that regime's offensive mindset, and there would have been a seamless flow from GM to head coach to quarterback and from quarterback to the rest of the players. A uh, familiar name if you're a college football fan, Tom Brady, the quarterback who uh, all he did was lead this football team, put them in the right position more times than not. And when he got pulled from the game and Drew Henson came in, Michigan football was not as good as it was when no, Brady was in. No question, Mike. Smart experience this past season. He cut his interception total from 98 and a half, tossed 20 touchdown passes, only six interceptions. Threw a touchdown pass and actually all 16 games he started against Big Ten opposition during his career. Accurate. It was a very catchable ball. He really knows when to take a little off as well. I think that's the key and he stands in that pocket. Very tough. He'll take a hit. Question's going to be mobility. Only runs a 5-2, 5, -two, five -forty. And of course, when you have those edge pass rushers, you have to avoid Joel the defensive end, the initial pass rusher. Can he do that at the pro level? Going to New England, Drew Bledsoe, his forte certainly isn't mobility. It's dropping back, throwing the football. Brady can do that, and certainly New England's offense already designed for Bledsoe. Now comes Brady. Can he overcome that lack of mobility? Along with that, Brady would have brought with him the clutch gene, the calmness, the courage to stand in the pocket, and the desire to be the next great 49ers quarterback, which he always wanted to be. And Steve Mariucci, he'd still have a job. And Terrell Owens, he'd have a Super Bowl ring, probably more than one. And he was right in our backyard, and he probably always wanted to be a 49er. 
And that would have been great. In fact, if we'd have drafted him, I probably would still be coaching there. <laughs> we all missed on Brady, including the Patriots, because if they knew he was going to be that good, they wouldn't have waited till the sixth round. Lacks great physical stature and strength. Lacks mobility and ability to avoid the rush. Does not throw a really tight spiral. System type player who can get exposed if forced to add lift. It means they missed the most important part. Part. They didn't understand what drives somebody. We didn't open up his chest and look at his heart. We didn't look at that. I don't know if anybody did. And I always remember he looked me like a laser eye to eye and he said, that's right, and I'm the best decision this organization has ever made. On Allen Sports.